did you just get a new winter white hamster or do you have a winter white hamster that's maybe biting you right now well you're not alone in today's video I'm gonna be touching base on not only just how to tame your new hamster and to bond with them but I'm also gonna give you a step-by-step -step process if I had to bond and tame a hamster in one week how I would do that it was so interesting to me. As I was getting ready for this video, I was looking up on YouTube and seeing other videos like this, and I noticed that there's a common search thread that no one's made a video for, and it's like, how to tame your hamster in one day, or how to bond with your hamster in one week. And I just thought, how interesting that we just want this experience to be over with so fast. And so I wanna encourage you, I am gonna give you a step-by-step -step of what to do in one week, but to know that it doesn't have to stop there. This process is something that I want you to find joy in, that it's an experience that you're going to be growing with your hamster day by day by day, and they're going to be learning more about you. You're going to be learning more about them. Do not look at it as this, I just want this end goal right now. Enjoy the journey. Um, you know, two to three years from now, your hamster is not going to be here anymore, and so you're going to wish that you would have enjoyed this journey that you're on right now. So I hope that encourages you. Now, to get into the content of the video, if it was day nine, Number one, and let's just say I just got my hamster. The first thing I would do is, of course, I'd have the enclosure already set up, so I'd take the hamster and I'd put the hamster in their enclosure. Now, I am sure you're all like me, and as soon as I've gotten a hamster, I just want to pick it up, I want to hold it, but we need to wait. The first thing we want to do is make sure that they learn that our scent is not threatening. So think about it. If they're a prey animal and all of a sudden you just come up from above them and you just scoop them up really fast, we want to avoid them associating our smell with them being afraid that we are the predator. And so an example of this, I know I have some hamsters who are perfectly fine with me scooping them up like this versus I have some hamsters that I know that I have to put my hand flat and they will crawl up onto me when they're ready. And then I have some hamsters that just prefer me scooping them up with a mug and then Putting them on my hand. You'll learn your hamsters have preferences. Not all hamsters are the same, which kind of makes things complicated. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that, but I'm going to try to break it down as simply as possible. Now, so this is about to blow your mind. This study blew my mind. My husband actually told it to me a while ago when we, when we first started talking about breeding hamsters. He told me that they did a study on birds and I forget which species of birds it was, but um, they took a mama bird and they, um, again, not saying I'm behind the study, but this is what the study was. They abused the mom bird with a person who was wearing a, like this specific mask. And so the bird obviously learned to be afraid of the person that was wearing that mask, right? So then they, um, analyzed her behaviors, they analyze, analyze like her heart rate, and then um, later on obviously she had her babies. They then put the babies in the room, the mom was not there, with the person wearing the mask, and the babies had the same stressful reaction and heart rate as the mom, even though the babies had never experienced any sort of situation with this person in the mask before. They never met them, they never smelled them, they never touched them, they never knew them but that temperament from their mom literally genetically transferred to their children can you believe that is that not mind-blowing but this is so important to know because your hamster genetics not only just affect the way they look and how healthy they are but it also affects their temperament the reason this is important is because if you got your hamster from a pet store that hamster probably originated from a rodent mill and what that means is that those hamsters were abused. If they've had interactions with humans, it's been negative interaction with humans. And so because of this, you are going to have to go on a longer journey to help your hamster to trust you. Now, on the flip side of this, if you're adopting from, let's say, an ethical hamster like myself, <laughs> then you're getting a hamster that not only the parents were dealt with in a loving way, but then the pups from a very young age have been handled, if not daily. And so it's going to be a lot easier for them to go on this bonding and taming process because they've already had a positive experience with people's hands. I hope that kind of makes sense. i sorry, I was trying to make this as simple as possible but now it's probably like half the video <laughs> but I think that's really important to know so to get into that the first thing I would do now that I understand that is I take a deep breath and I'd be like okay 
I'm gonna hold them soon. But for right now, I'm gonna grab some toilet paper, tissue, or um, paper towel. You just wanna make sure that paper towel doesn't have bleach added, and you wanna make sure that the tissue doesn't have like um, lotions added, because some Kleenexes have like lotion added to make it softer on your nose. And I want you to stuff it somewhere in your clothes. So some people just like recommend rubbing it on your skin. I think take a longer amount of time. Take the toilet paper and like stuff it maybe under your shirt, put it next to your tummy, you know, put it in your pants. Put it somewhere where it's gonna be lying right next to your skin and it's not gonna fall out of your clothes. And I would leave it there for like an hour, two hours, however long until you remember it's there. And then I would put that in your hamster's enclosure to let them use as bedding or as nesting material. Now, whatever they choose to do with it, even if they don't touch it, your scent is on there. Humans rely a lot more on their eyes, but hamsters rely a lot more on their scent so even if they don't tear this nesting material to shreds they're going to smell you and recognize that the scent is not equaling them being attacked or being eaten so they're going to begin to learn that this scent is not dangerous now step two once I've done that I would make sure that they're in a space that is quiet so a space that doesn't have like loud music loud like no loud washing machine or dryer I'd also want to make sure I don't play anything loud on my computer or on my phone just a nice quiet place because they're already going to be jumpy at it as it is because it's a new environment and they need to investigate that new environment and then in a couple of hours if they're out and about this is what I would do. I would go grab a mug and I would scoop up the hamster with the mug. Now I'm not going to force them. I'm going to set it in there. Uh, maybe I'll put a couple treats in there and let the hamster crawl into it. And if it goes well, then I'm going to put my hand right here and I'm going to um, tip the mug onto my hand and let the hamster come out onto my hand. I find most hamsters won't bite when you take them out of the enclosure with something else that's not your hand. Most of the time when you grab a hamster from their house, they're either territorially scared and they're like, don't, don't touch me. Like this is my home. Like get out of my home. Like, ah, oh, this is my space. Or I find that it startles them because you're coming from above. And the only thing that would come from above is a predator. So once I'm holding the hamster in my hand, as long as they're not biting me <laughs> if they're biting that means they're like i'm done put me back like that's their only way of saying stop like put me down that's their boundary so it's good to respect that boundary but some hamsters you can feel it in their body some ham like i have um espresso he's right over here and like every time i pick him up i just scrub him like this now like i pick him up like this and he's just so relaxed like i could just like shake him i would not do that but just like that feeling he's just his body's so relaxed versus i have cinnamon latte over here who's like digging up a storm in her wheel i don't why she does actually digs into her wheel it's the randomest thing <laughs> should i show you guys i have literally no idea why she does this look at this cinnamon why are you doing that it's so funny versus cinnamon she's a great example of the fact that she is not a very relaxed hamster when she's held she just is really never loved to be held but like she doesn't bite when she's held ever she likes never bitten me but you can tell she's stressed out and so one of the things i love to let hamsters do oftentimes um, when they're stressed is let them run on your hand then they'll learn that you're not constricting them you're not confining them but that you're letting them go they're okay they're safe they can move they can run and as they're doing this they'll be smelling your smell they'll be experiencing and they'll start they'll start to hopefully relax this is something that you can do it'll help them get their energy out they're gonna have this this instinct to move and that's fine that's good so that would be one of the things I would do I grabbed cinnamon because she keeps scratching at her wheel the next step before we go to day two I would recommend coming up with a schedule so a schedule where you know that at nine o'clock every night that's when I'm gonna come upstairs and feed my hamster so now it's day two. What would I do on day two? Well, on day two, I would now recommend if you see the hamster at any time during the day to put your hand in the enclosure with loads of food. So like not just one, but like a, like a little scoop of your seed mix. Your food Hamster food mix can work great as a treat. I find if you just use a bunch of treats, you're going to be filling your hamster full of sugar. <laughs> so use your hamster seed mix put it on your hand and that way your hamster won't just immediately attack your finger if they're a biter they'll come and they'll start um, nibbling the food if they bite you then I recommend taking your hand back out and just dumping the food right where you were so they learn oh that person just brought me food what I personally still do to this very day no matter how long I've had a hamster 
every time I see them. So every time that they see me, I always use my voice and I say, oh, hello, and I always say their name. I'm like, hello, so-and-so, so hello, cinnamon latte. And I like say their name and then I always go grab them a treat. Or if I hold them, then I put them back and I always give them a treat. This way they always know like, oh, hey, if I crawl in this human's hand, this person is going to give me a treat. Like I will get a treat every single time I interact with him. And that helps them to not be afraid of you, but to also want to be with you. Obviously they have an ulterior motive, but you know, we're, I don't know about you, but I'm okay with that. Right, Cinnamon? Right, my sweetie pie? After doing this multiple times for day two, I would also make sure that I take the, the mug. If that went okay yesterday, I would try again today. Use the mug, let them crawl in the mug, and then set them on my hand, hold them for a little bit, and then put them back. On day three, this is where I would think my hamsters begin to learn my scent a little more. They feel more comfortable with my hand in the cage, and they know that my scent is non-threatening I would clear out a bathtub and I would go sit in the bathtub scoop the hamster out with the mug again and I put the hamster in the bathtub with me and I would just sit in the bathtub and I would let the hamster crawl all around me all over smell me I would make sure I wear socks and long sleeve and long pants just so they don't bite if they find something on your skin like oh what's that and they chomp you just because they're curious and so I recommend doing that. And then I would sit in the bathtub and just let them explore you. Don't be threatening, don't grab, just sit there. Another thing I would recommend doing is if you have any time on the second, the third or the fourth day, I would try to hang out next to your hamster's enclosure in the evening time. So whether that be you're watching a TV show, you are on your phone, you're on a phone call, just like hang out by them because your smell will be coming off of you. And then you'll also, also be getting to hear your voice more and more it's so crazy to me how now my hamsters know who I am not only just by my voice like I have a couple of them when I can just like call their name multiple times and then they'll come up out of their burrows literally because I mean they know they're getting a treat that's probably why they come out but it's crazy they know my voice versus when other people are around whenever my pe like people come over to my house all of the hamsters stay hidden like it blows my mind so they really do know you and they do get to know you and they can tell when other people are around and so on and so forth um, as well as they will learn the scent of your hand my husband he doesn't hold the hamsters as much as I do so whenever like I put a hamster in his hand and I leave my hand next next to his the hamsters always crawl back to my hand because they're used to me as the taming process goes on you'll find that you are actually bonding with your hamster which is just the coolest thing ever for day four and five I would try the bathtub method along with putting less and less treats in my hand so this way I'd be putting my hand down there'd be less and less treats in there and I would try to put them further back on my hand so that the hamster has to kind of crawl up onto my hand and then once they're there I would carefully lift them up out of the enclosure to hold them if this goes well this is when you no longer have to use the mug method now you don't have to get rid of the mug method completely remember to encourage you if these things are not working with your hamster remember where they came from your hamster might be triggered by some of the things you're doing because of their history on how they were either raised the the circumstances and experiences they went through and where they came from so it's important to just have empathy and grace and patience with your hamster because you have no idea what they've gone through prior to meeting you and so it is possible that some of these things will take longer than expected because of their past but i'm sure that every day will be a step closer even if it's a small step to getting to that place where your hamster knows your scent above all others and trusts you.